enlightenment is not a mystical, magical thing. Yes, that has been really stretched too much. And that is really all part of mythology or people who wanted to sell this knowledge to you. Wake up and see the truth. Enlightenment simply is the highest level of understanding. That's it. We have misunderstood a lot of things. Enlightenment is not going to be a big glowing light coming out from here and there is no ego inside. Suddenly it has crushed and crumbled or the subtle body has died inside the... Oh my God, all this is... Nothing is going to happen like this. Nothing is going to happen like this. People who sell this to you, you should smile, bow down, turn around and run. Yes, these are stories. Wake up to the truth. It is not mystical, magical. Nothing out of the world is going to happen. Everything is going to remain the way it is. Objects are going to look like objects. People are going to look like people. Everything is going to be exactly the same. The waking state, the dreaming state and the deep sleep state. We said these are the three states of the mind. In the waking state, the mind is fully functional. In the dreaming state, the mind is partly functional. In the deep sleep state, the mind is not there. It's the same. It's not going to change. There's going to be a shift inside. A shift. I don't see objects. I see Brahman. That is the shift that is going to happen. I don't see ego as the I. I don't see the body as I. I don't see the mind as I. I am that Brahman. I am that knower of the body and the mind. And this knowing, this or knower which is inside, this knower is not an entity again. It is not a limited entity. It is a field of knowingness. It is the same field of knowingness which is the Brahman outside. There is no difference. You understand who you really are. You understand that you are the knower and not this ego. How difficult was it to come here? One Advaita session gave you a glimpse that you are the knower. There is no difference. That's all that is going to happen. Because your perspective changes at enlightenment, then you see what is the point of craving for this silly thing? Who is craving right now? This ego came up because of its past habit. It used to like chocolate ice cream a lot. Now it is saying chocolate ice cream. But now I'm so clear I'm the lower of the one craving for the chocolate ice cream. So I play along. How you watch a movie? Like that. You have enough tragedy and drama in your life, correct? Still you go and enjoy a three hour full drama movie. And you clap and you come back, correct? That's how the enlightened mind plays in the world now. It knows that it is just the ego that is craving for chocolate ice cream. Okay, have your chocolate ice cream. See, is it tasty? Have. You want more? You see, automatically because you've given the power to the knower, the ego starts losing its power. Yeah? It's not so strong. Initially, because of past habit patterns, it will crave. It will have its same habit patterns. Say, no, I don't like this person. Say, who, who doesn't like? Who are you? Show me. The knower knows. That there is an ego that is saying, I don't like this. Yes, it starts losing its power. The moment you check on it. Who are you? And there, it 
vidars away because you're so established in this knowingness. You see, this knowingness is in everybody and everything. It is not just here. It is there also. It is there also. It is there also. Different pots have water in them. The same sun shines in every pot's water. Every pot's water, the same sun is shining. And it does not do any partiality equally in every pot. Yes. Then it is shining in my pot. In one, one pot comes to the Advaita session and he says, you know, I am pot. I am the green pot. So I tell him, no dear, you're not the green pot. Look carefully, look carefully. So it looks inside and says, oh, I am the water in this pot. So I say, no dear, you're not the water in the pot. Look carefully, look carefully. And then finally it notices the knower, the witness, the shining light and says, oh, I am that knower, I am that knower. So then I say, no, you are not that also. Then what am I then? I say, look up, up, look up at the sky. And it is actually the sun looking down and looking at its reflection in all the little pots. This is enlightenment. Knowing that it is the same reflection, it is the same eye, the same sun in every pot. Koi difference in here. When I was in my little pot, in my little world, I felt that only I am the Brahman consciousness. This other one is not the Brahman consciousness. No, no, very bad person. No, no, no. The knower is here also, there also, there also, there also, there also. Oh, I am that Brahman that is shining on every little wanderer. This is enlightenment. Do you understand? It is very simple. It is just a higher understanding of the truth. That's it. Nothing magical about it. By praying it is not going to happen. By you going to the temples, mosques, churches, lighting candles. I will light 10 candles more than my neighbor. I'll be a little more enlightened. It's not happening. By singing songs to God, by dancing. It's not going to happen. By reading scriptures also it's not going to happen. By Walking the path, that is the only way. And how do you walk the path? By actually making an effort to experience this truth that is going to happen. You experience this truth. It is very, very real. It is my experience. Yeah? My experience is that there is this Pure knowingness in the deep sleep state. In that comes my I thought. That I thought creates different images in the mind of liking and disliking and wanting and not wanting. And those manifest in my external physical world. They are projected in this external physical world. You mull over this. Enlightenment and all, it's very yummy to listen to. Okay, that is later. Right now, my experience. What is my experience? Am I in the knowingness? Yes. Do I see this knowingness as infinite, limitless? Yes. Is anything that I am touching, hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, other than knowingness? 
it is only knowingness. This is my reality. This is my world of experience. Seeing the object. The object is an assumption. Yeah? Touching. It. That it is an assumption. Yeah? Smelling it. That name is only a name and form. It is an assumption. My experience. What is my experience? Just knowing of it. I only know it. And really, is there an entity which is knowing? Look within. Again, again. See, is there an entity? Or is it like a field? Yeah. Again and again, keep experimenting. Keep experimenting. There are not objects in this world. On this gallery view of Zoom, Whatever, however big your screen is, you will see whatever 25 people. Yeah, if it's a small screen, you will see less number of people. You will see whatever 20, 25 objects. All in different parts of the world. Yeah, they are not even on the same part of the world. All 20, 25 different objects here. Yeah, they look different, they are different. Everything is different about them. Yes. Are they really different images? Are they all different? In appearance to the eyes, they are different. That is called apparent reality. Now run your finger through this screen from one end to the other. Are they different objects? What are you perceiving? On the finger, what is your touch telling you? Are there 25 different objects? How many objects are there? There's just one screen. Are you understanding the difference between apparent reality and actual reality? Simple. This is very clear. Now extend this. Now look around your room. What do you see? You see objects. Mind is saying, I see objects. I see furniture. I see whatever this thing, that thing in the room. It is actually nothing but shape and color of the shape. Yes? And you have given it a name. Yeah? If there are 10 pieces of furniture in your room, if you're, if you're sitting in a very big room, 10 pieces of furniture all made of wood in your room. You say, I see the sofa, I see the wardrobe, I see the TV set, I see this door. But if a mason comes in, what will he say? I only see wood. Apparent reality and actual reality. Are you getting the difference? Apparent reality comes from the intellect giving it certain names and we are stuck in those names and we believe those to be those objects. The actual reality is there is the oneness in all the wood, in all the furniture. Apparent reality seems like there are 25 images on the screen. When actual reality is there is no difference. Yes? The same thing you extend now to your practice. Apparent reality is that this is a trackpad. When I touch it, I do not experience the trackpad. I experience knowing of touching. I eat a strawberry. Apparent reality is that there is a strawberry that I am experiencing, tasting. 
actual reality is I am knowing of tasting. Comes down to only knowing. Apparent reality is I am hearing a sound. Actual reality is I am knowing of hearing. Everything comes down to the same knowingness. The same knowingness that knows the mind, that knows the body. It is all one field of knowingness. There is no two. There is no Dvaitam. It is Advaitam. It is Advaitam. There is only the field of knowingness. There is only the field of knowingness. That is Brahman, that Brahman is inside, that Brahman is outside. There is only Brahman. Okay, the goal of Advaita or any spiritual path is to make you realize that you are always in the deep sleep state. That is the actual reality. And what is the apparent reality? That you think you are in the waking state. Yeah? Nobody is pushing you into any state. You are just not aware. That's all that spirituality does. It makes you aware. Yeah? There is first the deep sleep state or the darkness of pure consciousness in that the subtle body or the mind comes up with the thoughts, feelings, perceptions and sensations and in that there is your waking state where you experience the objects. Has that big state of pure consciousness gone? No. That pure consciousness is there throughout. It's within the big circle, a small circle has come up. Within that small circle, a tiny circle of waking has come up. Then that tiny circle of waking goes away and that uh, big mid circle of dream state goes away. The pure consciousness is there. It's all happening in the same pure consciousness. Are you getting it? You already had the glimpse of being the knower. That's it. And I already told you the practice. You're expe expecting there is going to be a very long journey. That is why you make your spiritual path longer. You are responsible for making your spiritual path longer. Because you are not mentally ready. You are not mentally prepared to accept the truth that I am already there. There is really nothing to do. It's simple. You are already the knower. You just wake up and see, oh, I am the knower. I am not the one who is suffering. I am not the one who is happy. I am the one who is witnessing the happiness. I am the one who is witnessing the suffering. I am the witness. You don't have to become the witness. You don't have to create the witness. You don't have to manufacture the witness. You are the witness. You've just forgotten that you are the witness and you've become involved in the ego. It's like when you go for a movie, the movie, the plot of the movie is so gripping. It's, it just consumes you. You forget who you are. You forget where you are sitting, what you are doing and you feel you are the actor and you start crying when there is a tragedy happening and you start getting involved. You feel you are in love. That's exactly what happens when the knower forgets himself and becomes the ego. And this only knower then suddenly remembers, oh, it's a movie. What am I doing? It's that simple. 
there is really nothing to do. There is nothing to do. There is nowhere to go. You are already that. <laughs> because your mind is not ready to accept, then certain people come up with certain things. So, really in the Indian heritage, we have like, big buffet of you know things that you can do techniques that you can adopt there were techniques created for people who wanted to serve there were techniques created for people who want to sing and dance there would be techniques created for people who could not come out of dvaitam dvaitam is duality so then techniques were created okay that is god and you are its servant and you serve the god Different techniques created for different kinds of minds because they are not ready to accept the truth that you are already that. Finally, you go through all these. Everything. You go through purifying your karmas. You go through serving. You go through surrender. You go through reading this scripture, that scripture. You go through becoming a scholar. You go through everything. You realize that throughout this process, I was only trying to get rid of unpleasant and stick on to the pleasant. And you get so tired, now you are ready to give up even the pleasant. Okay, I am ready to give anything for this. Give me the truth. Then Adwaita comes to you. Till that time, it doesn't come. Pleasant? Waking up does not happen inside. You don't see the lower. Yeah. It is your own internal journey. It has got nothing to do with outside people, outside influences. Yeah. Satori can happen in this moment, right now. You have to be open-minded. You remove these concepts, oh, I will have to work 10 years, 20 years, then I will get there. Because if you say that, then that's what is going to definitely happen. Yeah? You are already that. Not necessary. You could be doing the mind's attention with an object. What are you doing? Have you played with an elastic band? If you keep stretching the elastic band, what happens? Keep stretching, keep stretching, keep stretching, keep stretching. And you suddenly let it go. So there is a relaxation that is happening to the elastic band. That's what you're doing with mind's focus on an object. This is also something that we, the sages created to keep you busy. You focus on that object now. Now you keep pulling the elastic band. Keep pulling, keep pulling. And then after 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of your particular meditation on an object like the breath or the sound or whatever your object was, now you relax. Obvious, this is obvious that the mind is going to feel the relaxation. And you're not going to feel the ego in that moment. But then when you come back home, what happens? Back to the same. Yeah. These are relaxation techniques for with that last for a short time. That is not what Advaita is teaching. Advaita is the direct, the highest spiritual knowledge which points towards who am I? That is the meaning of spiritual knowledge. Yeah. According to Advaita, all these other techniques are good. You walk all of them. When you get tired, you come here. Advaita is waiting for you. Size of ego. That is also a manufactured thing. It, wow, what questions you come up with? The big ego and small ego. In that moment, how that state of mind was it reflected in that person? 
Sometimes you also become a lion and sometimes you are also a mouse. Both is ego. Become the knower of the lion and the mouse and sing. Stop being interested in the subtle body. You are very interested in questions about the ego. You are very interested about the mind. You are very interested in intellect. You are very interested in memory. High time. You have walked the path a long, long time. This is all theoretical. It will not take you home. It is good to learn about it, but realize that there is the highest knowledge and that is of the knower. That is of the knower. They are very similar. When a sage sits down and voluntarily withdraws from the physical body. He sits very still and then he, and he voluntarily, willingly withdraws from thinking, feeling, perception, sensations. He voluntarily goes into the pure consciousness. In the knower, he gathers the capacity to be established in the knower. That is called Samadhi. Yes, it is same. Maybe sometimes the mind can also feel balanced and equanimous when you have pulled the elastic so hard and relaxed it. The mind can feel Relaxed and balanced and equanimous. Don't go on feeling. The knower is very tangible. I can be the knower and I know it when I'm the knower. I know it when I am lost in the ego. I can very well distinguish between the two states. Just become more and more aware. Be more interested in yourself. That's it. You are very interested in things outside. That is why you lose sight of the internal mechanism. Focus inside more now. And you already know it. This is a beginner scripture. Yes, the beginner's path for Advaita is in this scripture. So don't complicate it with the higher level terminology yet. We will get there. Yes, slowly, step by step. This particular scripture is for you to get a glimpse of what Advaita is. It shows you the end goal and then you can decide, yes, this is my path or not. When you decide, yes, this is my path, now you venture deep into the Upanishads and then we can talk about Sabuna Brahma and all. Yes. Right now, you recognize, is this something I am ready for? Yes. Do I have the patra? We'll do the higher scriptures for the people who think this is my path. Yes, Advaita makes complete sense for me and this is the way I want to go. So then we'll have a separate session for those people. And then we'll go deeper. Yeah. This, the, the widest or the vastest philosophy of Advaita and the actual analysis of really how this is all Brahman, how an object is Brahman. Where did I get this from? This is from the Brahma Sutras. So these are the higher scriptures which have this, the entire philosophy explained very well. We can get there with baby steps. There's a big difference. When you are in the mind, you will know there is analysis going on and there is an eye sense. These are the two 
qualities that you will notice that are happening if you are exploring intellectually. What? I sense and analysis. In experientially knowing the knowingness, there is no re requirement for words. Because it is beyond the intellect, no? It is behind the intellect. It is reflecting on the intellect. You can only know the eyes. You cannot see your eyes. You can only know the presence of your face here. Yes? You cannot see your face. So there is no analysis. Yeah? You are not using the mirror. There is no analysis. There is just the sense of the face. There's just the sense of the eyes. Yes, that's how I sense the face and the eyes. Exactly same kind of sense you will get with the knower. The knower will know there is sadness arising. The sadness arises in another place. There is a story about the sadness happening in another place. And there is a knower behind knowing the story and the sadness. This is experientially knowing what is happening in this inner environment. Yes, I am the knower of that anger. I am the knower of that sadness. I am the knower of the greed. I am the knower of the joy that has come up. Yes. I am saying this, but you are not going to be saying this when you are experiencing it. You are just experientially there. Right now you can do it. Go there experientially. You are the knower of the I seeing it. You are knower of the mind agreeing to what it is saying or disagreeing with what it is saying. Knower of this silence, the pause in the conversation. You are knower of the smile that came on your face or the frown on your face. You are the knower. You don't need words to tell. You, you don't have to repeat it to yourself. Oh, I'm the knower of this happiness. Oh, I'm the knower of the sadness. No, no. There is no telling yourself. No, we are not doing anything like that. Pure experiencing reality of this body-mind complex in the now. Again and again and again and again. That is experientially exploring this inner environment. Super clear? This is only number one step. You are doing it in two different places. The inner world and the outer. This was number one, the inner exploration. And then will be the outer exploration. Outer exploration, suppose you are vacuuming the floor. The simple task of the holding the vacuum in the hand is moving like that. Simple thing. Yeah, that object. Do I really know there is an object that is sucking up dust from that dirty carpet? All that is an assumption, all story created. All that I really am experiencing is the perceiving of the touch of that handle of the vacuum and the sound. The perceiving is not different from knowing. In that exploration, there is just knowing. Now you be with the knowing, not with the story, not with the assumption, just purely being with the knowing. You practice just being there. It's a matter of practice. It's a matter of not getting swept by the story. Story belongs to who? 
the mind. Not getting swept by the story and being in the knower. Good. I am looking at my reflection in the mirror. I am looking at how my hair is looking, how the face is looking. I have a subtle sense that that reflection in the mirror is who I am. Now, let's put down the mirror. Take your awareness to your face and eyes. What flashed in the mind was the reflection that I just saw in the mirror. That is nothing but a vasana, a memory. I have an attachment to my reflection and that is what passed, just popped up. Erase, delete. Experiential. What is my awareness of who I am or my face. Become aware of the face. Become aware of the eyes. I cannot look at them. I cannot see them. I have a very slight awareness of my eyes. Are you seeing this? A sense of the eyes being there, the sense of this face being there. Exactly like this and exactly only this much is going to be your sense of knowingness, the knower. Got it? Just like you cannot see your eyes and cannot see your own face, like that only you cannot see the knower. You can only be the knower. Be the knower. All week, keep practicing. Be the knower. If it's very difficult to be the knower, first make an attempt to, can I just be this face and the eyes? Can I see myself without a mirror? Don't try to create an image in the mind. Just the sense of this face and the eyes. And now take that only back to the image in the mind and know that there is a knower watching the image in the mind. And now from that, go to the knower. Only that much you are going to know about the knower. So don't try to make it very big. Yeah, This is the reason I did this meditation. Because a lot of people tend to want to know the knower in its full glory. Cannot. You cannot. A drop of water cannot know the full ocean. It has to just look within and recognize I am nothing but H2O, hydrogen and oxygen. And the ocean is the same hydrogen and ox oxygen. I am Brahman. The entire creation is 